I'll start off by welcoming everyone to this June full moon meditation and energy medicine ceremony. Uh, we have a lot going on cosmically right now. We have a full moon today. We have five planets that are in alignment, and it's a lot. <laughs> you may find yourself feeling fatigued, like you need to do a lot of resting and sleeping and self-care. And if that's the case, it's okay. Just recognize that your body is, is receiving and letting go. And you just need to be present for it and surrender to it. Um, but we'll begin by you know, doing some silent meditation, and then we will move in to our meditation. So we'll go ahead and center ourselves, get quiet, internalize our awareness, relax, receive. Release what doesn't serve you. seems to often happen during this time of the year uh, that it can be very difficult to do our spiritual practices. Uh, it may feel like it takes more willpower than usual to do them, that uh, we, we don't want to necessarily do them. We want to do other things. We want to do nothing. We have to really struggle during times like this to continue in our practices to continue in our lifestyle that's conducive to our practices and to consciousness and healing. But that's a good thing. It's a good thing because it helps cultivate and strengthen our will to be awake, our will to heal, to be conscious, to persist in doing the things that make us so. So your efforts at this time, while it may take more effort than usual, are very worthwhile. And I encourage you to keep persisting. And forgive yourself if you don't always get it just right, if you sometimes fall short. Just keep going, keep practicing, keep moving towards healing and higher consciousness and forgiving your missteps when you don't quite get it right. We'll begin this practice a little differently than you. I felt inspired to do a slightly different meditation this evening for our healing ceremony. We begin by imagining ourselves all in a circle, sitting all in a circle, And around us shines a golden dome of protection, golden energy coming around us, enveloping us. And we are a circle within this golden sphere of light, which protects us and nourishes us and creates sacred space for us to do work together. We bring in the violet flame to purify this space, to banish what does not serve us, to create a clean container for our work so that nothing may be present which is not invited. Imagine now that violet flame coming down into this golden sphere, permeating the space, permeating us, cleansing, 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 transmuting, transmuting, transmuting. <laughs> we 
we will now call in the benevolent spirit of the East, the element of the wind, that it may be with us and protect us. We call in benevolent spirits of the West and the element of water to be with us and support us in our practice today. We turn now to the South and invite the benevolent spirits of the South the element of fire to be with us, to protect us, to serve us in our healing and our consciousness today. Call in the benevolent spirits of the north and the earth element to be with us and support us today. We call in Father Sky and the benevolent spirits of the upper world and angelic realms, calling in the devas and the angels, calling in Raphael, Gabriel, Mikael, Uriel, and Metatron to be with us. <laughs> we call in Pachimama Shakti. Mother Earth to be with us, to support us, the benevolent, benevolent allies of the lower world. We invite into the sacred space Shakti. Rudra. Agni, Indra, <laughs> Vishnu, Krishna. Jesus the Christ, Mary Magdalene, the female Christened energy, Quan mm. Yin, mother of compassion and devotion, Mary Magdalene, mother Mary of God. Twin aspects of the divine feminine of lower and upward descending and ascending Kundalini energy. We invite into this sacred container Ganesha, We invite into the sacred container, Lord Shiva. We invite into the sacred container, Brahman. We invite into the sacred container, Buddha and Buddha nature. We invite to this sacred container, Saint Germain. We invite the Ascended Master, the Order of Melchizedek, into this sacred container to be with us. <laughs> mm. 
we invite the gurus of Kriya Yoga to be with us. Yogananda, Sri Yukteswar, Lahiri Mahasaya, Ma Avatar Babaji, to be with us. We invite our higher selves into the sacred container to be with us. We invite our benevolent star brothers and sisters to be with us. We invite all of our allies of the benevolent nature not yet named to be with us. We now move our awareness to the earth star chakra beneath our feet and say by our great time presence and the God within. We awaken the earth star chakra. Mm. Also inviting in the Andaras also inviting in the crystalline kingdom. And we say, by our great time presence in the God within, we invoke maximum awakening of the earth star chakra. By our great time presence in the God within, we receive from the benevolent host of beings who have gathered around us from our higher self. What is needed for the Earth Star Chakra's healing and evolution and expansion at this time to serve highest good? Amen. Mm. We fill the Earth Star Chakra with prana. And invite that energy to move up through our feet. Mm. Up through our ankles and calves. To our knees. To our thighs. And as that energy moves throughout your system, notice the places where there is tightness, where there is resistance, where there is stuckness. And invite that energy, which is awareness, to penetrate that tightness, that stuckness, until the stuckness moves, dissolves, dissipates, leaving relaxation and peacefulness. Mm. We move now to the root chakra at the base of the spine. Our great time presence and the God within. We awaken and empower the root chakra. Mm. To 
we invite peace into the root chakra. Receive what is needed from the benevolent beings gathered here. What is needed for our root chakras healing, evolution, and expansion to serve highest good at this time. Amen. We are in a time of the transition and expansion. And when we are in these periods, it is very important that we comfort the root chakra, that seat, survival and security. Mm. It's important that we tell it that everything is okay, that there is nothing to fear. That while things may be uncertain, the most important aspect of our being is imperishable and can never be harmed. That death is nothing to fear. That suffering shall eventually pass. Mm. That living fully is worth the risk. Living fully in the heart, living in, in, in authenticity, living in obedience to spirit, mm. continuing to expand and expand and expand. Our capacity to hold light and love joy and peace. Mm. It is from this foundation of our trusting in our fundamental security that all expansion shall occur. We are now moving into our sacral chakra, the seat of our creativity, our personal power, and our sexuality, our intuition, our great time presence in the God within. We awaken and empower our sacral chakra. Receive what is needed from the benevolent beings gathered here for our sacral chakras healing, evolution, expansion at this time for our highest good, please. Amen. Each of us is endlessly in a process of finding greater balance between our masculine and our feminine energy, between our yin and our yang, between action and receptivity. Each of us is male and female. So our body shall give us a bias. We are both things.
And while we may achieve a certain degree of balance between these energies at a level of consciousness, each time we expand or up level in our consciousness, we must once more find the balance between these two energies from this higher perspective, from this place of more energy. So you may find yourself in a dance endlessly of shifting the masculine and feminine energies within your being, consciousness, shifting and evolving, going this way and that, sometimes more in the masculine, sometimes more in the feminine, sometimes more in greater balance between the two. Notice where you are experiencing a bias in your consciousness at this time. Are you more in the feminine? Are you more in the masculine? What is needed to bring more balance into your being and consciousness? Mm. We bring in that balance between masculine and feminine within us. We bring in balance between these two polarities within our being. Recognizing that to be balanced in the masculine and feminine is not to be some sort of neutered being, some sort of asexual being, some sort of gray and drab being, but to be a vitally alive being, <laughs> more vibrantly alive, more whole, more complete more radiant than one energy by itself could manifest. So we fully accept the wholeness of who and what we are. We fully accept that we are male, that we are female, we fully accept that we are in an endless dance of becoming into greater harmony and embodiment of these qualities. Softening now, hardening then, always balancing, 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 dancing, 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 dancing. Becoming more fully human, more fully alive, more fully divine. Letting go of all shame. Letting go of all guilt. Letting go of every wish that we were other than we are. Letting it all go. Letting it go. Letting it go. Accepting the creativity of our soul. Looking at every boundary that has confined us, every boundary that has limited us, every self-limiting belief that has said, I am not that, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Looking at every box we have confined ourselves to and saying, I am that too. I am all things. I am capable of whatever I desire. <laughs> I am strong enough. I am alive enough, I am whole enough to accomplish whatever I set my mind to. So we stop cutting off our desires as they emerge within us as being impractical. We, cut off our we stop cutting off our desire as it is born and saying, that is not me. That is not appropriate. <laughs> and instead, we enter into a deep state of receptivity that asks infinite creator, 
what wants to be expressed through me. I am in full surrender to whatever that may be. balance we are seeking in the sacral chakra is one that allows us to live in this body and feel free, to feel at home. You are free in this body. You are free in this body. You are free, you are free, you are free. Free to express, free to dance, free to smile, to make love. You are free, you are free, you are free. Mm. And it is from that place of freedom, it is from that place of being at home in the body, it is from that place of being in touch with our desires, our emotions, that we are remaking the self. We are rebirthing the self, the social self, the self that the world sees, the self that shows up in community, that shows up and says, this is me, this is who I am, and this is what I have to offer. We move into the solar plexus, that seat of social identity, place of our mental impressions, place where the fiery wheel resides that allows us to bring into manifestation that which is desired at the soul level in the sacred chakra. When we say by our great time presence in the God within, we awaken, we empower the solar plexus. Mm. And we invite what is needed from the benevolent beings gathered here. We invite that into the solar plexus for its healing, its evolution, and its expansion in service of the highest good at this time. Amen. Mm. We are in an interesting time in our evolutionary phase. We have power, we have creativity, we have the new world that wants to be born. And we have the old world which is resistant to change. And these two things coexist side by side, often intermingled with one another. One often wants to leave the other behind, whether it's the old world or the new. But we're stuck with one another. And that's exactly how it needs to be at this time. Where one informs the other, one uplifts the other, one grounds the other. One, these two things are in a dance of balancing one another so that the new world may be born and take that which is valuable, good, and useful from the old with it. <laughs> Mm. 
we are in a process of alchemizing our social identity, taking what is true and useful and good about everything we have been up to this point and bringing it into balance and harmony with the new aspects of the self that have more recently been born, that maybe have not been fully yet integrated into our quote, 3D lives. That alchemy can at times feel like a war, but it's really just an invitation to choose what you prefer. How much change can you stand at one time? How much change can you integrate at one time? How much infinity can you hold and express? <laughs> in the transformational process, it is so very tempting to get to a place of relative comfort and familiarity after a period of disruption and uncertainty and say, I have made it to the promised land. I can put my feet up now and relax. My work is done. It's okay if you choose that but be careful not to settle for only a slightly different version of what you've already outgrown. Be careful not to settle for a different version of the old and slightly different garb, which will allow you to repeat mostly familiar lessons in a new disguise. Instead, I invite you to fully digest the lessons that the old had to teach you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to fully appreciate what has been learned, to fully integrate it into your being, to make it a permanent part of your consciousness. And from that space, from that higher level of consciousness, Ask yourself, is this new life room really a new life room? Or is it the old life room with rearranged furniture? You will know when you are honest with yourself what is true. <laughs> Instead of rearranging the furniture of our 3D, life, instead of rearranging the furniture in the old life room that has taught us what it had to teach us, but no longer challenges us, no longer pushes us, no longer invites us to become more than what we have hitherto been. We have to be willing to say, I am not going to settle for mediocrity. Mm. I choose to be the most exceptional version of myself I can be in highest service to the common good of all. I choose a new life room that is challenging, that is invigorating, that invites me to continuously expand and grow and learn and manifest in my life abundance of every kind at every dimension of consciousness and in my life. And I choose not to only serve that narrow aspect of myself that wants to be free and abundant, but I also serve others 
I serve their healing, their higher consciousness to the best of my ability, recognizing that from a higher level of consciousness and abundance, I am able to serve more powerfully. And that the whole purpose of this evolutionary path is to grow so that we may serve more powerfully. Mm. So that we risk the unknown and unknowable, not only for ourselves, but for all those that we may help, that we may serve, that we may uplift. Mm. We are now moving into the heart, but first we must move past the gateway, the gateway of the choice at the diaphragm, the flower of life, the point at which we say, I choose, having infinite choices, I choose to be of service to others more than self. I choose love over hate. I choose compassion over judgment. Our great time presence, God within, we awaken the flower of life. And we invite in what is needed. With the flower of lives, healing and evolution and expansion so that we may move more deeply into our own compassionate hearts. We invite that in from the never beings gathered here. Amen. Move our awareness to our heart. That place, that meeting point between heaven and earth within us of ascending and descending Kundalini energy. We awaken our heart. We awaken our heart that it may expand until it knows no bounds. We awaken our warrior's heart that beats, beats, beats in service to life. Mm. And we invite in our heart what is needed at this time for our hearts healing, evolution, and expansion to serve highest good for us. Amen. Mm. We live in times that are often confusing. We live in times where it's hard to know right from wrong, who to believe and who not, who to trust and who not. Difficult time to be human. And the only way to navigate it is to return over and over again, despite the mind's confusion, despite not knowing up from down, Return to that heart space, that seat of compassion and love. Mm. And say, I choose love, even though it may make me foolish at times. I choose love, even though I may seem naive. I choose love because I recognize that this is not 
the density of knowing. I lack the faculties to fully appreciate the whole picture of what is going on. I lack the capacity to really know. And that my efforts at knowing are often a false conceit. It gives me a false certainty about the way things are. That often leads to judgments that actually keep me from my heart. I say, I don't know. I admit to unknowing. Mm. I let go of my judgments. I let go of my prejudices. I let go of every preference except my choice to love. Because that is the only thing of which I can be certain is that love is the truth of who and what I am what I came here to express. <sighs> we often try to be wise and loving. And it is good to work on that balance between discernment and love. That's the advanced curriculum. But let us not proceed to the advanced curriculum before we have mastered the basics. And the basics are loving unconditionally, the present moment, everyone in it, without judgment. And saying, you are my brother, you are my sister, you are my mother, you are my father. You are my child. You are my beloved. You are my family. Mm. We are all one human family. There is no escaping the other. For all relationships endure in these bodies and others until every relationship of every kind with every being becomes sacred. Well, there's no use running away. <laughs> we simply say, I love you, my brother, my sister, my beloved. You two are me. Mm. At this time, we will invite in our plant allies. We invite in our plant ally, Ochuma. and ask for what is needed for our heart's healing at this time. Mm. We invite in our plant, I, plant ally, Mother Ayahuasca, incarnate spirit of divine Mother Earth, and ask for what healing is needed at this time. Mm. We invite in our plant ally, Grandfather Tobacco, and receive what healing is needed at this time. Mm. 
Mm. Connect with Grandfather Peyote and receive what healing is needed at this time. And we invite within ourselves the balance between these three energies of ayahuasca, peyote, and lachuma. We invite perfect balance into our being at this time. Move our awareness now to the throat chakra, the seat of truth, to our great time presence and the God within. We awaken and empower the throat chakra. We ask the benevolent beings gathered here to please bring into the throat chakra what is needed for its healing, its evolution, and its alignment with absolute truth. Mm. We affirm the mantra, the law is one, the truth is one, all is one. We invite intelligent infinity into our being. Amen. Mm. Move our awareness to the third eye, the seat of our intuition, the seat of witnessing awareness. We say by our great time presence, God within, we awaken and empower the third eye. We invite into the third eye what is needed for its illumination, its expansion and healing at this time. Amen. Mm. As we cultivate the capacity to witness our thoughts, we are cultivating the capacity of the third eye. We are cultivating our capacity to have an experience without being caught up in it, to have an emotion without being dominated by it. We are, cap we are cultivating our capacity to have free will. That is what it means to open the third eye. It is to become sovereign. It is to not live from a place of reactivity, but one of deliberateness. Mm. We move our awareness to the crown chakra now. To our great time presence in the God within, we awaken and empower the crown chakra. We 
we invite what is needed for the illumination of the crown chakra, for our enlightenment, for our self and God realization, please. We bring that in now. When we attain a sufficient clarity in our lower chakras, sufficient prana is moving through the subtle body to the crown, we can shift our awareness to this point just above the head, which is spacious, which is blissful, which is infinite. <laughs> And there is as much infinity as you have patience to perceive. Mm. Again, we affirm the law is one. The truth is one. We are one with the one infinite creator. We expand now, please. Mm. We rise up and we are one with our highest self. We are one with the infinite creator. Mm. And we ask for the infinite creator transmit into our beings what is needed at this time for our complete self and God realization our highest service to others. We say we are here, we are ready, we are open. Please guide us. Amen. <laughs> We bring our awareness now back to our hearts. We bring our awareness home to the body. Mm. We say thank you, Divine Mother. Thank you, Divine Father. Thank you, brothers and sisters of the light. Thank you for all you have done for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are grateful for the healing that you have imparted. And we send our blessings and our love to you. And receive a final blessing of whatever it is you wish to impart, whatever messages you have for us. We receive those now.
Mm. We send blessings to Mother Earth, but you, Mama. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Divine Mother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do for us. We are sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry that our brothers and sisters do not take better care of you. We are sorry for our own transgressions, our own carelessness, and our own lack of love with regard to you. We send our blessings and gratitude for all that you do. Divine Mother, amen. And we may open our eyes. How is everyone doing? Is anyone experiencing sacral chakra tightness? Just below the navel. Okay, let's just fill into that a little bit. What is that sacral chakra tightness? that is keeping us from being our wild and our wonderful, complete self in the world, our free self, our liberated self. Mm. And it is conditioning. It is conditioning, it is conditioning, it is conditioning, it is other people's expectations and our own expectations of who we should be, what is proper. And we allow the unself consciousness of a child to enter our being. We invite into our being the freedom of a child. Child that has not been conditioned and told it is this or that. Child that is perfectly free. A child that is perfectly at home. A child that has not yet had that separation between the intellect and the self that happens at some point around ages five to seven. Mm. And that awareness is now moved into the solar plexus. And there is the natural fears of judgment, the natural fears that arise when we embody our wildness, our freedom, our creativity, our power, our lack of conventionality. That is a big one. If you are gathered here or hearing my voice, you've at some point taken a departure from what might be termed consensus reality. You have in some way, large or small, decided that there was a truth that you were hearing and that wanted to be expressed through you that was bigger and more powerful than that song that other people were playing and dancing to. At some point, you turned away from that tune and started listening to another, started moving and dancing to a different rhythm. And you are at that point where you hear both songs. And sometimes it can feel like a cacophony. 
sometimes you can judge yourself for not dancing to the other beat. But know that the most important thing you can do is to not judge yourself and to simply listen intently to truth as best you can and move to its rhythms and be obedient to it, to express it in your mind, body, and soul. Don't worry about judgments of yourself or others. Simply dance with the carelessness of a child to the rhythm of truth. <laughs> And we're complete. All right. How is everyone feeling? Any questions? Any tightness? Anything like that? Okay. Well, that's wonderful. So wonderful being with you all this evening. And it was a little different format, but it felt appropriate. And uh, I hope you all enjoy this full moon. It's been intense. You know, lots of things are getting uncovered. Lots of things are shifting and changing in our lives. And um, at this point, the best thing we can do is to dance to the truest tune we can hear with abandon. <laughs> all right, everybody. Much love. I'll talk to you all soon. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.